Among the women Jesus met were the widow of Nain, whose son had died, the Canaanite woman whose daughter was ill, the crippled woman he saw in the synagogue, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, and a woman called Susanna. Soon afterwards, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some woman who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Shusa, and Susanna, and many others who, provide, who provided for them out of their resources. Among the women Jesus met were Jairus, daughter of Mary of, of, um, Mary of Magdala, a woman who covered his head with ointment, a whore who washed his feet with her tears. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him, and he went into the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And a woman in the city who was a sinner, having learned that he was eating in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment. She stood behind him at his feet, weeping, and began to bathe his feet with her tears and to dry them with her hair. Then she continued kissing his feet and anointing them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what kind of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a sinner. Jesus spoke up and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, he replied, speak. A certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. And Jesus said to him, You have judged rightly. Then, turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has bathed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore, I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven, hence she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Then he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. But those who were at the table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this for even, who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Among the women Jesus met were a Samaritan woman with at least five husbands, Mary, the mother of James and John, Salome, who witnessed the crucifixion, and Zebedee's wife, who was proud of her sons. Listen for the word of God in Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 31. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with the fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. Among the women Jesus met were, Mary and, were Martha and Mary, who lived in Bethany. Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, a woman who hemorrhaged for over twelve years, and the mother-in-law of Simon Peter. Listen for the word of God in Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 to 28. When the, the disciples saw it, they were amazed, saying, how did, the fig gear, how did the fig tree wither at once? Jesus answered them, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only will you do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. Whatever you ask for in prayer with faith, you will receive. 
When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say, From heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you, by what authority am I doing these things? Among the women Jesus met were Susanna, Samantha, Betty, Rebecca. I used to be married, but didn't work out. Like Jonah, my friend, I married a civil servant and ended up with an uncivil husband, working for a corrupt regime. In some ways, it suited me. There were receptions, the parties, the privileges. There were also the poor, <coughs> the homeless. There was both the people who my husband despised, but yet my conscience directed me. I had to break out. I was fed up with being his possession. To be displayed rather than a wife to be loved. I had a small private income, so I left him. You can call me whatever you like. It doesn't bother me now. I was all these things and more. But I was never cheap. No, I always had style. Scarlet satin dresses, box furs in the winter, bangles, baubles, and beads, and the occasional cigarette in a long holder. I won't say I was happy. It was not my choice to be a floozy, but if your husband dumps you, and you have no means of support, and you're an orphan with no family to fall back on, what can a girl do? I did what I had to, and most of the time I hated it and hated myself. But there was nothing else for it. I had to live, and if I was going to be a whore, I was going to do it in style. Betty's the name. Betty to my friends, Elizabeth to my in-laws. They were very posh. Mom to Sandra, my daughter, and I'm never sure what Peter calls me. He's Sandra's husband. I don't want them to get married. I didn't like him much. He looked scruffy and he had a terrible accent. I said to our Sandra, he's a fisherman, they stink. You'll never get the smell out of the washing. If you put his shirt in with your sheets, you'll end up lying on oysters and starfish. You mark my word. But she wouldn't listen. I said, why not go after a banker, Sandra, or an accountant? They don't smell, but it was no use. Still, he was good to me when Jack died. They took me in, gave me a room, and Peter got me to mind his stall in the market on Tuesdays and Fridays. We're in business, Zebedee and Sons is the title, though I, the dear wife and mother, do most of the work. My husband inherited the business from his father, and strictly speaking, it should be passed on to James and John. But that's very much under debate at the moment. I've always been proud of my children. I think mothers should be. I've pushed them forward when they needed it, and boys always need a little push. And I've always been keen that they kept good company. I expect them to bring all their friends home. I want to see them. I don't want them mixing with anyone beneath them. We have a reputation to preserve. These Susanna, Samantha, Betty, Rebecca, these were am among the women who met Jesus. I was really apprehensive about him. He wasn't from my class or background, but there was something of sincerity in him. No, not so much sincerity as integrity. He was real, and when he spoke underneath, I knew that what he said was true. And when he spoke to me, it was because of who I was, not because of whose wife I was. <clears throat> or had been. I felt like he valued my opinion and learned from my experience. So when jo Joanna suggested that we should help finance him, I drew money from the bank and gave it to Judas. I offered my house when they needed it, and along with other women, I followed him. I never thought that I would do it. You know, wiping, my feet with, wiping his feet with my hair and all that. But I did. The reason I came to know about him was because of a crack some boy shouted at me one night. Why don't you go and see Jesus? They say he likes girls like you. It was shouted in derision, but I took it seriously. <coughs> Men had always come looking for me, but I had never gone looking for a man. I watched him twice while he was speaking. There was no threat in, to, in him to people whose life had gone off the rails. There was a lot of hope in him. There was a lot of forgiving in him. And that's what I needed, forgiving. 
And that's why I broke into a rich man's party and washed his feet with my tears. I knew he would let me be sorry, and I knew he could make me whole. I never liked him much, to tell you the truth. I had no idea who he was, and I wasn't religious, so I didn't want to know. But I was appalled when Peter started going after him. I said to him, listen, Peter, you've got our Sandra to look after, and if she hasn't told you, I will. She's eating for two. You've got responsibilities, family responsibilities, and you've got the boat to attend to and the market stall. You can't go wandering around the countryside after a carpenter, but he wouldn't listen. I was more than pleased when I heard that James and John had attached themselves to Jesus. I was very proud. A substantial number of people in the community, influential people, had said to me privately that they believed he was the genuine article. Not being an expert in Jewish messiahs, I had nothing to compare him with, though I must say his appearance left a little to be desired. The boys told me that he had called them from mending the nets. They were uncertain as to whether to go or not, so I took them to Jesus. I said to myself, they'll be glad of this one day, and whenever they came home, I'd ask I'd ask them to remember me to him the next time they saw him. Among the women Jesus met were Susanna, who supported him, Samantha, who washed his feet, Betty, Peter's mother-in-law, and the wife of Zebedee. And having met him, they were changed. Amen.